What's up guys, we've got a great collection of Spanish revolvers for you today. We've just got Astras, Llamas, and, and Clint, what are you doing? It's a fidget spinner for men. Everybody, Clint here with Classic Firearms, and I'm now done annoying Matt. What's up, guys? <laughs> and guys, we've got a collection of some surplus revolvers, and uh, these things are pretty sweet. So we've got ourselves a collection of Spanish revolvers. These were, I assume, Spanish law enforcement or something. So our understanding is that they were uh, European police trade-ins, not necessarily Spanish okay. because they were used around, but yeah, all over the place. Also, makes sense. your child. Yes, I am. Uh, and guys, these things are actually pretty nice. They're all chambered in 38 Special. Mm -hmm. Nothing we have here is 357 or mm -hmm. anything like that, right? No. Okay, so all of it's 38 Special. And if you want to start it off, whichever which one you want to start well, off. Well, might as well just start on this side. So sure. we've got Llama revolvers. Uh, so Llama. 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 Or like I, I believe technically it would be pronounced Yama. Yama. Okay. Because right. it's the double L. You know. That's fair. Sure. Um, but yeah, so these are, you know, again, 38 specials. Uh, all of these kind of resemble something like a, uh, a Smith & Wesson Model 19. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, Spain has some interesting copy or uh, patent laws okay. where if you don't specifically file for patent protection in Spain, it wasn't considered protected. So you'll see Spanish copies of a lot of pistols. The most famous probably being like the Ruby pistol, which is okay. a French design made by like 50 different companies in Spain. Oh, wow. So yeah. it seems likely that something like that's kind of going on here where, uh, you know, they're copying, again, possibly like Smith & Wesson design. Yeah. But uh, I mean, when you look at these uh, pistols, yeah, they have some wear, you know, of course they mostly holster wear here at the end of the barrel and stuff, but you know, it's it's a great, you know, functional pistol and you, uh, you have that kind of history, that provenance yeah. of knowing that this was carried by a law enforcement officer. Yeah, which is always pretty cool about any of our surplus, you know, trade-in firearms. But yeah, go ahead and take a look at that guy right there. And we've got an assortment of them over here, guys. Just grabbed them pretty much out of the bin that they came out of, or the crate, and just wanted to show them off to y'all so you guys understand or have an idea as to what you might be receiving at the FFL. And this uh, this is the model Martial. Or Marshall model. Okay, um, well, I, so if it's used by law enforcement, I see what they did there, right? Well, but not Marshall like a police officer. Marshall, okay. I, like, I keep forgetting that we're talking about a different language here. <laughs> Marshall like, uh, you know, a court martial. Yeah. Okay, I got gotcha. you. And you can see that clearly written right there, right towards the muzzle on the barrel. So very attractive guns too. I think they look really nice. I mean, I think they have kind of and again, it might be that kind of Smith & Wesson start of appearance, but yeah. a very classic American oh, firearm yeah. look to it, even though it's from Spain. Right. Uh, one thing that they do in basically every European country we don't really do here is even commercial uh, firearms have to be proof marked by government proving house. Yeah. So even though these aren't military firearms, yeah. they do have government proof marks on the frame and barrel. Yeah, just ahead of the uh, cylinder there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. I see that looks cool. So, uh, you know, those are always kind of cool. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, so the llama, uh, one of the things I do like is this kind of ribbed sight on top of the barrel. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, I just think that they look really well made. Um, and they feel well made. Yeah. yeah I mean, they just feel good. Like you said, that, that Smith & Wesson analogy, I guess, and how they feel is rings true, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, when we got the Model 10s, and I honestly looked at these and was like, oh, we got more Model 10s, mm -hmm. you know, from a while ago. And uh, it's like, on second look, it's like, no, that has, that, that's that's a llama. What the heck, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, but very cool. Again, just want to show off a couple of these for you guys. Something I thought that was neat about these, and something I don't typically see mm -hmm. on revolvers, though, is, you know, that... Um, the rib. Yeah, that rib rib sight that you were just talking about. It's just something that looks really neat. It looks like, you know, they just took the idea of, uh, you know, a 12 gauge dove gun and were like, hey, let's put, let's put that ribbing here on a 38 special because why not, right? Yeah. Um, and of course, we've got a couple out here because as surplus, the condition will vary. Right. So we just wanted you guys to see that, you know, grips are going to come in kind of different shades. Uh, you know, there's going to be different amounts of wear. So some of them, there's kind of a, a larger spot of wear here on the end of this barrel versus you know, this one. Probably a lot of holster wear from yeah. they're, you know, drawing and undrawing things. Absolutely. Like that. Yeah. This one has less wear, but yeah. a little bit more kind of scratching. But so this gives you an idea of what you can expect. And of course, if you're worried about condition, yeah, we have mm -hmm. our hand select option. Exactly. And our hand select option is something kind of similar to what you see right here, but instead of it's six guns of whichever SKU that you're looking at or product, it's going to be 10 that our pickers select through. And what they do is they look through those 
10 and they will say, hey, this one right here looks like it's probably got the best cosmetics, got the most bluing and best looking grips. That's going to be chosen as the hand select option for you guys. So take advantage of that if that's what you're looking for. If you're not worried about it, don't get it. The choice is absolutely completely up to you. Now, similar to the Yamas mm -hmm. that we have here, we've got ourselves a collection of Astras. We both have heavy barrels like the Yamas and also the, I guess, standard barrel on these. And with this guy, what I'm noticing, like I said, is very similar to the Yama being that heavy barrel, mm -hmm. but there are some slight differences, right? Yeah. So here's a, another one, for example. So we have kind of a more squared off area here of the frame where the, uh, the, the crane connects, crane connects. Yeah. thank you, you. No, versus you. rounded here. But then the swoop yeah. here is a little bit contoured differently. It's more abrupt, so it's kind of yeah, more, more square. Uh, of course, you don't have the, the ribbing mm -hmm. exactly. But overall, when you look at it, you, you're definitely struck that they base this yeah. on the same design. Right, yeah. Now, Which isn't surprising again, considering yeah. like 50 Spanish companies made the Ruby, right. two of these companies made basically the same gun, right. not surprising. Yeah, now something that I will say, the Yamas are very nice looking and all, but I do like the Astra symbol. Uh, oh, yeah. You and I were talking about that earlier, especially on a lot of these, it shows up very, yeah. very clear and in depth. You can see that right there on the frame just behind the cylinder and underneath the hammer. Now, what you're also going to notice about a lot of these guys is we can't guarantee what style grips you're going to get. These are surplus guns. Guys, you know, officers, whatever they may be. Marshals, sometimes they replace them. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes they replace them. Sometimes they break. And sometimes they replace them with new grips. Sometimes they just don't like what they had and they want to jazz them up some. Yeah, so Maybe have bigger hands. That's yeah. You go so, for something like that. Yeah. So what this one reminded me of, because a lot of them look like they have that kind of like standard 38 special grip, which mm -hmm. is a little bit larger than like the little snub noses that we're user, used to, which this is actually a much more comfortable grip than that. Uh, so here's one that obviously has a little bit rougher condition just on the grips, but everything else on the guy other than some holster wear and things like that looks overall what I think pretty, pretty good. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, yeah, so you can't expect everything to be exactly the same. Uh, but like what we mentioned before with hand select and everything else, even if you don't select hand select, you're still getting a functioning firearm, yeah, which is really cool. Now this one that I keep playing with over here is uh, one that's calling to me, I feel like. I really love that oversized grip and it actually reminds me quite a bit of the python. If you want to grab that over there. Absolutely. Why are we keeping the six inch python laying around anyways? I don't know. It seems like I should go home to one lucky winner at some point. Yeah, at some point. But anyway, just wanted to kind of compare the grips and y'all can let me know if you think they look similar. I personally think they do. And uh, makes me kind of wonder, like you said before, I wonder where they got the idea from. Yeah. yeah. And you know, so, uh, you can see kind of both of them have a little bit of a sweep out at mm -hmm. the bottom. Um, and this one looks like almost like the exact same grip as what you're holding. Yeah. It's just that they rounded it off yeah. on the backside. Right. Um, but yeah, those bigger grips are really nice, especially if you have bigger hands and it kind of be cramped up to, yeah. to fit around there. And then you've got other ones kind of like this guy here, where this side, probably just from how it's being held, most right. likely a right-handed uh, shooter. You know, you've got a lot of wear on the grip, but definitely was refinished or some sort of finished wood at some point in time, because mm -hmm. the opposite side looks beautiful. <laughs> yeah, and that, that's one but, thing to keep in mind is that since most people are handed, the right side is mm -hmm. most of these guns is gonna yeah. look a little rougher than the left side, just right. from palm sweat and, and friction and stuff. Yeah. Um, and sometimes, you know, maybe they had uh, had it get a little bit rough and they started to refinish it. And so you might see things like, uh, you know, where the back strap of the grip or like the base of the, the frame of the grip uh, ends up being proud of the wood because, yeah. you know, maybe they try sanding it down a little bit. Sure, gotcha. But very cool. And these again are the Astra heavy barrels. Mm -hmm. And then we've got the standards over here. And again, just to kind of show off a little bit of these guys, obviously a huge weight difference. <laughs> like comparing these, it's like, oh my goodness, this thing, you know, is, this is a brutal beast. And that guy kind of was like, oh, I, that probably kicks a lot more. Well, you know, you, you <laughs> call it a heavy versus a standard barrel, but it's not just the barrel. Like you can, yeah. you can see that the frames themselves yeah. Oh, yeah. are actually a different size, different yeah. weight. So this is not only just a, a lighter barrel profile, but it's also a lighter frame in general. Right. Um, you know, even the controls are smaller on this. If I flip this around, yeah. you can see even just the cylinder release on the, the NC6 uh, model is, is yeah. smaller. But, uh, so it's your concealed carry version. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think the weight of this feels like it would be much more uh, comfortable to carry yeah. around. Like, imagine oh, you're absolutely. a police officer. Yeah. Ninety percent of the time, this thing stays in its holster. Yeah. So this might be something that you would like. I'd prefer to carry this, even yeah. if I might prefer to shoot this. Right. Yeah. I'm not going to go full dirty hair with it. You know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, so I can see where you're coming from on that side of things. Let us know down in the comments here, which one is it that you're looking at taking home? Because I think all of them are also speak their own stories and are gorgeous. But here's another one. Again, notice the right side of the grip has a little bit more wear to it versus 
the opposite side, which I'll show you guys here in just a moment. Let me show off the frame a little bit more instead of my hand blocking it for you guys. And Sorry that, about that. And that was interesting because it's been kind of varnished or something. Yeah. You know? Yeah, like I said, so, I mean, maybe, yeah, some sort of varnish, some sort of finish, something like that, where somebody was like, hey, I actually like my gun and I want it to look really good, you know? So there you go. And then we've got other ones where somebody was like, I don't care, it's a duty firearm, I'm just gonna let it go to raw wood, which I also think was really good. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's hard for me to just dislike firearms. But you can see like almost all of the, uh... Oh yeah, the the, the, the checkering is pretty yeah. much gone and everything. It's yeah. just basically flat and smooth. Yeah, so notice on, again on the right hand side from where you know this officer or whatever would hold his firearm. Uh, and who knows, if it was a holster that stayed here, he may have just kept his hand on it all the yeah. time as he's walking around, you never know, right? But anyway, so over here, not a whole lot of checkering happen happening, but on the opposite side, you can see where it actually still looks pretty good. Yeah. So, you know, maybe this is a advantage for left-handed people like me. You go out, you buy a yeah, used yeah. gun, and you're like, hey, I still have grip left. That's right, because it's uh, pretty much ambidextrous, right? Other than the cylinder release being on the left-hand side of the frame. Yeah, but I mean, reloading a revolver is a two-handed job anyway. Yeah, I mean, you're right, so there you go. But very cool. And uh, got a couple more here. Here's one that I would think would qualify. Now, not to say that, you know, everything's going to be exactly the same because it's surplus and it's not. Mm -hmm. But something like this looks like with the bluing, how good that looks and everything, I would consider to be a hand select. Mm -hmm. uh, but then again, the grips aren't the best on this guy, but they're also not the worst. So something like this is along the lines of what you can expect. Don't want to say it's a guarantee, of course, because every last one of these guns has differences. Right, and it, it depends on the specific group that they're looking at and things like, yeah. you know, the, the third best out of what's on the table could be the best out of the 10 they're looking at. Yeah, right, very true. And let's just show off a couple more over here. More of the Astra, well, I'm just gonna call the Astra Light. <laughs> All right, yeah, it's a model NC6, so you can find yeah. that on the website. Um, and again, guys, you know, it, just depending on uh, which of the three you're looking at, you know, these should all be under their own separate SKUs. That's not a custom option, but you do have the hand select custom option. Um, so I don't know, which do you think you'd prefer? Uh, probably the one I keep fondling the most, which is this guy right here. Again, the Astra Heavy one, or what's it actually Nine, called? 960. 960, there we go. And just so you guys know what to look for out there, we've got the lighter Astra, the smaller frame, lighter barrel. This is the NC6, mm -hmm. and then the 960, which is the heavier frame, heavier barrel. And this is the Yama Militar. Or, no. Sorry, uh, Marshall. Marshall, there you go, the Yama Marshall there. So for me, yeah, I this thing just is so attractive to me and I love that grip on it, the larger swell and everything else. So I'm gonna consider this to be Clint's hand select. And Matt, if you had to choose one, what would you choose? I think I'm gonna go over here. I think that this one really looks nice. Uh, yeah. I mean, the bluing on it is just really fantastic. There's a little bit of wear here at the end. Yeah. But I mean, I think, Again, I would definitely would go for one of the heavier ones, yeah. and I just like the, the lines of, of this pistol a little I bit I gotcha, better. and I, I actually do like the Yamas quite a bit. I really like that ribbed sight, yeah, you that, know? Yeah. It's just something you don't typically see, and I'm assuming they probably did that just for weight reduction, mm -hmm. I guess. I guess you get a little bit more venting around the barrel for cooling. Yeah, so I can see that, but yeah, ultimately, yeah, this guy just looks really good. So guys, we've got Matt's hand select, we've got mm. my own hand select here, and yeah, we'll set those up as custom options, so if you want the gun that was featured in this video that you see right here, one of these two, make sure you check it out on the product page. And we'll leave it at that. Now, the last gun I wanna talk about though is uh, not the one that's behind me right here. No, that's going to a good home soon. It really is, so congratulations to our winner of the DS Arms SA-58. But we figured it just looks so good, it could live up here, but it's going to somebody's home. And, uh, but we wanna continue on with the battle rifle trend because yeah. I love them. So it's actually uh, the tactical Ugg boot that you see right here attached to this FN SCAR. So the SCAR... Well, just to clarify, they get the whole rifle, right? Yeah, they, just they the do. Okay. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah okay. they, get, they get the whole rifle. I was getting there. All right. The thing is, though, the UG boot is attached to the SCAR. So you're getting the UG boot, but also the SCAR, which is pretty cool. <laughs> Guys, we just shot our video on this one as our current giveaway. 20 round box mag, FD, FN SCAR. Come with the vertical grip because, I don't know, I like shooting it better with the grip. Mm -hmm. And also the Vortex AMG UH1 holographic, which we did an entire torture test on, and I felt bad about it, but it was really cool to do. So go check out that video, guys, announcing this as our giveaway, and also the torture test. And of course, you can get your entries in at classicfirearms.com. Mm -hmm. What's the best way to get the entries? It's always gonna be to refer your friends. Yeah. Refer your friends, and also, now you can get an additional 400 entries by utilizing the code word. What's that code word? Boot. Boot. 
B-O-O-T. Das Boot. Das Boot, just like this. So guys, again, classicfirearms.com. Hit that top banner and it's gonna take you to a webpage that shows you how to get all of your entries. And also too, check out all of our surplus firearms. We've got an inventory and of course, all of the Yamas and Astras that we got. Pretty sweet revolvers. Mm -hmm. And I think we'll leave it off there. Yeah, I think so. All right, sounds good guys. Hey, as always, we appreciate you and your business. God bless. We'll see you next time at classicfirearms.com.